I've seen that film literally, I don't know how many times, but when they play that track, um, it just really gives me goosebumps. But what a day. How many of you are actually happy that Jesus is alive? Yeah? Let's show our faces as well as our hands. Okay, so it's a happy day. And I think sometimes we're almost at risk of just acting as if it's just another day. It's really not. It's actually everything. Our faith is built on this. If today didn't happen, then actually you might as well just go home. It would be a complete waste of time. The resurrection is what makes our faith alive. Now, Glyn said um, that this is an all-age service, and it is, so we are going to have some uh, audience participation. Now, if you are under the age of 12... Uh, and you would like to receive something, uh, something nice that I have in my bag, you have to do a little bit of work this morning because around the church, only in the main worship area, not upstairs or in the kitchen or anywhere else, there are nine plastic Easter eggs. Okay, They are duct taped in various places. And if you are under the age of 12, I want you to go and look for them now. Okay, And there's going to be some things in them. Don't open it. Okay, I want you to look. I want you to look in. You might need to get down on your hands and knees to have a little look. Adults, you might want to help them. Um, I came in last night and I hid them, hopefully not too well. Okay, but there are nine of them. And once you've got them, I want you to come and stand at the front here. Okay, so there are nine. They're different colors. And adults, you can, you can help them. Got one? That's good. This could be a long morning if we don't speed it up. Okay, that's it. There's a few people feeling under their chairs. That's a really good place to look. Okay. Wow, you got it. Oh, look, that duct tape is really good quality duct tape, isn't it? That's it. Fantastic. If you hold, we'll open it yet. We're going to open it in a little while. Well done. Well done. So we've got, how many have we got? Three, four, Okay. Adults, can you check under your chairs, and then if you think there might be something there, maybe just wave at a child? Okay. Oh. Uh, our lowly vicar has found one. He was literally low then. He was on his knees. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four. Don't open them, guys. Don't open them. You, can you hold it? You hold it. You hold it. Okay. Okay, we've got another one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, three more. Has anybody looked at the bookshelf at the back? Has anybody looked where the Bibles are? Have they got that one? The rest then are under chairs. So some of you are sitting on one and obviously didn't check your chair. And that. When you all did that, it looked, oh, for a minute it looked like we were in a mosque and you all gone down to, <laughs> all gone down to pray. That was, quite, uh, that was quite funny. Okay, if, you, if you've got them, can you stand in a line so I can see how many we've got? You've got, so we've got one, two, th three, four, five, six, seven, two more. Yeah, that's wet for a reason. We're going to look at that in a minute. Okay. Yeah, I, my, it was my dog. Okay, no, I'm joking. Okay. Well done, well done, okay. So, how many have we got now? So, a quick count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's one more. So, it's, it's under a chair, if anywhere, because there were two in the Bible thing, there was one on the speaker there, and the rest were under chairs. So, if, you're, if, you're sit, if you can see a chair near you that you're, that's empty, please check that as well. Fantastic. If not, it'll probably turn up at Christmas when we... Uh... Okay, I'm going to do a countdown from five and then we're just going to go without it and we'll just work around it. Five. It's only chairs that are out. It's not on chairs that are... Oh. Oh, you might have broken it. Okay, guys, don't worry. Come up the front. We'll just work without, without it. That's not a problem. Okay, now what I need you guys to do, can you just all sit down there because you're going to help me uh, during the morning as we look at the different... Yours, don't worry, it's only water. Well, that's what I'm telling you for now anyway. Okay, we're going to have a series of pictures um, up on the screen, and uh, we're going to look at the eggs. So, can you all tell me who's got number one? 
You've got number one. Justin, can you come up here? Come up here, please. Okay, right. Now, Justin, what I want to ask you to do, um, can we have, put the picture up as well, please, Justin? That'd be great. Can you open number one for me and, uh, and tell me what's in there? Nails. Ooh. Can you say that really nice? Say that nice and everyone can hear you. Nails. Nails. Okay, can we take them out? Let's have a look. Now, you all probably can't, you probably can't see these because they're very, very small nails. Okay, but if you look on the screen, those are nails that would have been used. These are very old ones um, that uh, archaeologists found. Okay, brilliant. Justin, if you want to you sit down. And we're going to do a little bit of uh, the whole Easter this morning. We're obviously celebrating the resurrection, but we're just going to go back um, a few days as well. Now, the nails were what held Jesus to the cross. But boys and girls, okay, and adults, do you think it was really nails that held him there? Do we? Who thinks it wasn't the nails? How many of you think it wasn't the nails? Okay. Hint is, if the vicar raises his hand, you're probably all safe putting your hands up. Okay? <laughs> Reminds me of years ago at PCC meetings when they talked about the finances, which always go way over my head. If Nigel put his hand up and agreed with it, my hand went up and I'd, I was happy. <laughs> okay? Now, it wasn't the nails that held in there. What do you think it was that held Jesus to the cross? It's a four-letter word beginning with L. Your mum and dad do this to you, hopefully, a lot. They, what do they, they, they love. love. It was, fantastic. Andrew and Neil, you've brought them up well. They know they're loved. Okay? But it was love that held Jesus to the cross. Okay? It wasn't the nails. The nails were the physical thing. But he could have come down at any moment he wanted to. Yeah, Jesus could have just called down angels. They would have come down. They would have sorted out all the Roman guards and all the people. And Jesus could have come down. It was, the, it was love that held him there. And it was love for all of us. Yeah, when Jesus did that, he had you, me, all of us on his mind. Now, who's got number two? Or well, is number two the mystery? You've got number Jamie, can you come up here? Can you open that for me? Oh, I've really done that one. Well, I don't know with the duct tape. Now, can you take it out and tell everybody what's in there? What is it? Is it a cross? It is, isn't it? Okay. It's a, it's a cross. Thank you, Jamie. Okay, now... You see that little, now this is, this is, uh, this is um, my craft abilities, okay? This is uh, matches with the heads cut off for safety reasons. Um, and I tell you what, if you want some really, really good glue, Evo Stick Serious Glue, it glues anything, okay? It's absolutely brilliant, okay? But the cross is what our faith is about, isn't it? Okay, but did you know that to die on a cross was the most, it wasn't just painful, it was one of the most excruciatingly painful ways to die, and adults, if you really want to know what Jesus went through, just Google what's involved in crucifixion and look up some of the doctors that have described what happens. It's actually shocking what happens to the human body doing that. But Jesus went to the cross for us. And it wasn't just that. It was a humiliating way to die. Somebody would, they would have been stripped. They would have been there in front of everybody just hanging. So it wasn't just the physical pain of it was the separation from God and it was the humiliation that Jesus would have gone through. And he went through it again because he loves us and he wanted to do it. Who's got number three? Anyone got number three or is that the missing one? That's the missing one. Okay, right. If any of you can find number three later, that would be brilliant, okay? It'll probably turn up when Steve's cleaning or something. Okay, but number three had in it... Oh, I think we're both doing it at the same time. There you go. Okay, who can say what that is? Aftershave. Now, why would I put aftershave in an Easter egg if I'm talking about Jesus? What, what, what would they have used it, that for? Not aftershave, something smelly. Uh, it was to stop, people from stop people from... That's very, very descriptive. Brilliant, okay? It was to stop. When they, when they used to bury people, they used spices and ointments to anoint the body, okay? Now, they didn't put mandate aftershave on. That's just the aftershave that I use, and um, it's what came to my mind. But... Jesus was definitely dead. They, they buried him. They anointed his body. They wrapped his body so tightly, yeah, he would have suffocated had he not already been dead. So Jesus was definitely be de be dead, and he was buried, okay? There was no, well, maybe he wasn't really dead. That's nonsense, okay? Jesus was dead. Who's got number four? One of you's definitely got number four. You have, fantastic. Can you, you were really... What, now, you've been really worried about this one, haven't you? Okay, can you open it? Okay. Now, what, what, what was in there? Water. You hope it was water, don't you? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was water. Brilliant. 
Brilliant. Now, it wasn't actually just, well, it was water, okay? It was symbolizing tears. Because if you were Jesus' disciple, if you were Jesus' brother, if you were, one of Je- if you were Jesus' mother, and you'd seen him be arrested, you'd seen him being flogged, you'd seen him being crucified, do you think you would have had tears in your eyes? I think we, w- we would. You know, I'm, I'm a, I, I don't consider myself to be one of those people that cry at, you know, everything. Although I have been known to cry at some sort of very emotional films. But that's as I get older. Um, but I know I would have cried tears. If I'd seen that happen to Jesus, and I'd been one of his friends, one of his disciples, I, I would have been really upset. Guys, you guys at the front, do you think you would have cried when you saw Jesus die? When you, when you love someone and they're, they're hurting, you do, don't you? So the people that are there with him, they would have cried. They would have been upset. Right, who, who's got number five? Now, you're going to have to do a little bit of work with this one, okay? And I'm, I'm kind of glad it's you, because I know you'll be capable of doing this. Can you open number five and tell everybody what's in it? Tatooine. Brilliant. Now, I want you to make that, very quickly, and see how good your skills are here, into a tomb stone. So the kind of stone they would have put over the tomb. Can you do that? Let's see how good you are with a bit of plasticine. Ooh, he's doing quite well. Okay, let's have a look. Ooh, see? Is that, do you want to clap or would that be too embarrassing? <laughs> give him a clap. Let's give him a clap. That was good. That was good, okay? But they, they didn't put plasticine. It was a rock in front of the tomb. And then it would have had a... Brilliant, you can sit down. Then it would have had a seal. Yeah, it would have had one of the, the, the poly pilot seal that said not to touch. Do not touch this and they wouldn't have been able to anyway because it would have taken several men to have put it over it would have been extremely heavy okay I know if I'd been one of the people that were asked to do it I'd have probably put my back out it was that heavy trying to do it but Jesus was dead he was buried they sealed the tomb and as I say nobody would have touched it because do you know what a seal is yeah in 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 bible times in the olden days something they would put wax on it and it would be hot wax, and then they'd seal it with probably their ring, and it meant that you don't touch that. It meant no, It's like, you know when you... Okay, imagine you're at home, okay, and whoever looks after you has made some cakes and put them on the side, and they've given you that look that says, don't touch. <laughs> it does make you want to, but if you take the look seriously, you wouldn't do it, would you? Okay, so when Trish says, don't, we all know in our house that there's a certain look that you don't then. Okay, so it was, it was like that. It was meant that nobody, nobody would get on it. Okay, who's got, who's got number six? <coughs> Helen, can you, come and, can you come and stand up here? Okay, Helen, let's have a look. Shall we have a look inside? Can you open it? That's it. Oh, you've got a bit of paper. Can you, can you open it and have a, can you have a look? Can you tell everybody what that is? What is it? Soldier. It's a soldier. Well done. Thank you, Helen. That's brilliant. You can go and sit, sit back down again, okay? It was a Roman soldier. Now, how many of you are aware of how well-trained Roman soldiers were? Okay? They were actually, at the, t- at the time, they were an elite fighting unit. You, you, you know, if a Roman soldier came at you, you'd be slightly concerned, slightly worried, okay? And there was a, squ- uh, there was a number of them guarding Jesus' tomb. So all the, the myths about, well, maybe the disciples took the body, it's a load of uh, nonsense because Roman soldiers were there. And I'm going to illustrate this this morning. I'm going to ask a number of people to very quickly make their way to the front. Uh, I'll have Jordan, Michael, Keenan, Callum, and uh, you two gentlemen. Can you very quickly just come up here? Don't worry, you're not going to do anything embarrassing. Nothing embarrassing. Okay? And I want you just all to, to line up here. Okay? Right, that's it, all together. Very quick. I'm going to move over here so I can... Okay, now, I want you all to stand there, um, bouncer style. Okay, so sort of stand there like you're on the door uh, door of a club. That's it. <laughs> okay, right. Come on, seriously, come on, do your thing. Right, now, I'm going to... Let's just imagine, David. Okay, David, if I said to you, these, these guys are going to be guarding the kitchen. Okay, Magda's done some lovely cooking, imagine. And these guys were guarding... Okay, the kitchen, and they are told under no circumstances is anybody to go in there. Would you be daft enough to try and get through with all those guys there? 
No. Okay. Do you know, the only person I think might get away with it would be Helen. Because she'd probably better go up, the li- this Helen, she'd probably just go up and smile nicely and they'd all probably just move out of the way. Okay? <laughs> but if there was a serious bunch of Roman gold, big burly men trained, you wouldn't try and get into the tomb. It wouldn't have happened. You know, disciples might have, you know, gone along and just thought, we'll just see if we can just go and have a look on it. Oh, my days, you've seen the size of those guys? Kind of thing. It wouldn't have happened. Okay, guys, thank you very much. You can go and sit back down. Just give them a clap. Okay. Okay. Roman soldiers would have let nobody get in that tomb unless they were heavenly beings. And that's the difference, isn't it? God sent angels that made those tough Roman soldiers who were the kind of like, yeah, yeah, you want a bit? Come on then, you fancy some? Come on then. Yeah, they saw those angels, bang, they were gone. They were out, they were cold, they were scarpering. Okay, because God did something. Now, what number's next? Seven. Who's got number seven? Fantastic. Girl with a smile. Per- oh, you've got two, that's, that's really good. Okay, you've got number seven and number eight. That's going to save some time, isn't it? Brilliant. Let's open number seven first. Let's see what we've got in number seven. Oh, another picture. What have we got in there? Let's have a look. Right. Can, you, can you tell everyone what that is? An angel. An angel. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. God sent angels. Now, when we think of angels... We kind of think, don't we, like, oh, that lovely little thing that maybe we put on the Christmas tree at Christmas, yeah? Angels were God's messengers, yeah? They were God's warriors, yeah? They had all, in the Bible, they had all sorts of different purposes, different things they had to do, and judging by how the Roman soldiers reacted, I don't think they were the kind, nice, fluffy type. I think they were the type that said, you really need to move out of our way now, okay? God sent them to move the stone because he was resurrecting Jesus. Yeah? Now, I'm not the kind of guy that says, does that get an amen? But Jesus got resurrected, so I think that needs an amen. Okay? Yeah. Jesus was resurrected. The angel moved the stone. Have you got number eight as well? Yeah. You're being really greedy this morning, aren't you? Yeah, can you, can you open number eight for me? Let's we see what's in there. Another bit of paper. What's on that one? hands, but what can you see on the hands? Can you see anything? That's Jesus' hands. Okay, that's Jesus' hands after he was resurrected because he went around and his disciples and many others actually saw him, didn't they? They saw the nail marks in his hands. It wasn't that it was somebody that looked a bit like Jesus and because they were really upset and they were mourning that they didn't really realize. It was Jesus. It was the Jesus they'd known As their friend and their leader, it was the real Jesus that was resurrected. Okay, well done. Thank you very much. Okay, we've got one more. Who's got the last one? Caleb, come up here. Can you open that for me and see what you've got inside there? Another piece of paper. Can you tell everyone what that says? Go tell. Go tell. Fantastic. Can you read what else it says on there? Okay, go, brilliant, thank you very much. Go tell the story of Jesus. Now, boys and girls, you've listened really well and you've helped me with this this morning. But did you know what? All of what we've talked about is really, really important. But Jesus did all of that. He died, he was resurrected, which means he came back to life again. But he did that so that we could be forgiven, didn't he? So that we could be friends with God again. But the very, one of the very last things he said before he went back to heaven, was go and make disciples. So that means for us that we need to go and tell people. Now when Jesus said, go and make disciples, it didn't have an expiry date. And actually, if you talk to a lot of Christians, you'd think it did have an expiry date. Oh yeah, they did that for the first few hundred years after Jesus died, but you know, people have got the Bible now and everything else. It's our job to go and tell people. Now, I don't very often get really, really, really cross to the point that I'm fuming. But I was at a school this week. One of my nephews had a little assembly, and I got asked if I'd go along to it because my sister, one of my other nephews, was ill. And I'm not going to say who, 
But a, uh, those kids did a lovely Easter story, and they told the Easter story. It was about Jesus, and it, I thought, wow, this is fantastic. And then they did some Christian songs, and I thought, wow, this is fantastic. And then the little, the vicar came in, and he kind of came in, and he was all nice, and vic- not that you're like this, Glenn, all vicar-like, okay? And, and he talked to the children. I thought, great, I'm really looking forward to this. He said, he talked to them about Easter eggs, and I thought, yeah, that's good, because it's Easter and kids like that, he said. And he talked about chocolate and what he likes about chocolate, and I thought, yeah, that's great, you know, we all like chocolate at Easter, don't we? And then he talked to them about the holidays, and I thought, yeah, kids like the holidays. And then he went and sat down. And I'm sat there thinking, you numpty, what are you doing? (laughs) And it was all I could do at the end. I could feel myself getting so cross. But fortunately, he had three or four people waiting to talk to him, and I had to go. And I went home, and I said to my sister, I said, you know what, I'm going to... She said, oh, please don't, please don't, because my children are at that school. But I thought, how can we not be telling people at Easter? We should be doing it all the way through the year. How can we miss an opportunity like that? But we all do it, don't we? How many of us have gone through this week, had a conversation with someone, had a conversation with a friend at school, or maybe something, but we've not taken the opportunity to tell them about Jesus? Because, guys, we don't know when the last day is going to be. One day, Jesus is going to come back again, and he's going to take all of us that know him to be with him. And all the people that don't know him, they're going to go to that other place that a lot of churches don't like talking about. What's the other place where people are going to go? Hell. See, you're whispering it, aren't you? Because we don't even like saying it. We don't, do we? But we've got to tell people. If you believe in the resurrection, if you believe in Jesus, but you don't believe in telling people, you're only doing half of it. Yeah, you've got to go and tell. So, guys, this week... I want all of you to, when you're out with your friends playing because it's the holidays, have a think, does my friend know about Jesus? Because all you need to say is, do you know, I went to church on Sunday and we've got this really funny bull bloke at our church, yeah? And he told us about Jesus and it was really interesting. And then you can just tell them a little bit because then you've done what Jesus asked you to do. Okay, we're going to do one more more little thing now before I finish. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you guys out one of these, right? I need need somebody mature and set Justin, Justin. And, and you, you're, you're quite sensible, aren't you? Okay, right. Can you make sure that everybody under the age of 12 gets one of them? And can you make sure that everybody under the age of 12 uh, gets one of them? That's fantastic. Actually, can I, can I take one of each quickly? Justin, can I just grab one quick? That's it. Fantastic. Um, no, I'm not. I'm definitely not. Okay. okay. Right, is anybody else sitting out there who's under 12 who's not... There's a little person. Oh, that's Vicky. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm only joking, Vicky. <laughs> okay. I did know it was Vicky. I was just joking. Okay. Ah, oh. it's not the worst thing I've ever said to you, Vicky, is it? <laughs> okay. Brilliant. Have you, have you guys got one? Did you not give one to your sister? You big meanie. Do you want his packet as well? Yeah, okay. Right, has everybody got one? You guys got one as well? Yeah, you got one. You've got one. Brilliant. We're going to do one more thing. I'm going to put an image on the screen. I don't know if you've ever seen this before. This is really, really good. Now, boys and girls, you're going to need to come and sit on the front row there to do this properly. Guys, can you come and sit along the front there? Now, in the middle there... Oh, oh this isn't working. In the, see the four dots in the middle? See the kind of like where the nose would be? There's four dots sort of lines, little squiggly mark. I want you to focus on that for about 15 seconds and nothing else. And then I'm going to get, okay, then I'm going to give you an instruction and then you really need to follow the instruction carefully. Okay, so focus on that middle section for about 15 seconds. Okay, now close your eyes and very slowly tilt your head backwards. Very slowly. Okay, put your hands up if you saw something. Okay, put your hands up if you're one of those people who are really annoyed now because you didn't see anything. Okay, those of you that did see... Can you, for the benefit of those that didn't see, tell them what you saw? A face that resembles Jesus, yeah. Yeah, Don't ask me how it works. It's really clever, okay? 
I've done this with you before, and some just get really frustrated. All those magic eye pictures where someone tells you there's a football pitch in there, and you're like, well, is there? I can't see it. Okay? But all it is, it's the image or an image of Jesus. Okay? And I want to just finish with this. If you're somebody who knows and has seen Jesus for yourself, and when I say see Jesus, I don't mean maybe physically seeing him, but you've had an encounter with him, then my challenge for you this week and the following week, and the weeks after that. In fact, basically for the rest of your life. Okay, and looking around, for some of you that's going to be a very long time, some of you that's going to be a little less time. Okay, it doesn't matter what stage we're at in life, we need to go and tell people about Jesus. Because otherwise, we're keeping that good news to ourselves. Okay, all of you that came up at the front and helped, thank you very, very much for helping. Thank you to all the Roman soldiers that came up and everything as well. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Should we give the, the younger ones just a clap for, for helping and joining in? Brilliant. All I can say is you don't have to be a funny ball bloke in order to tell people about Jesus. I know it says in the New Testament that the apostles were bold. <laughs> bald. No, not bald. Uh, I expect some of them were because male pattern baldness has been around for, since time immemorial. Um, uh, we need boldness, actually. Um, let's stand. We're going to come to the communion part of the service now.